Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mid Morning Manor. Lonnie Mattingly here, coming from our home office. I'm glad you've tuned in today. What a joy, what a blessing it is to come into your home, or your place of business, or your uh, your office, or wherever you might be watching. Maybe in your automobile, or wherever it might be, where you're watching, or maybe just listening to Mid Morning Manor. Thank you for tuning in. And this week, we're talking on this subject: Why did Jesus come? You know, we're we're in this Christmas, the pre-Christmas season. And all the excitement and all the zeal, all the shopping, all the spending money and all the running around and trying to please everybody and all that kind of thing. Why did Jesus come? Well, we talked about on Monday, he came to save the lost. Number two, he came to minister to people. He came, he wanted to minister to people, not just to bash people, not to embarrass people. He, his, his goal was to lift people up, to help them come to Christ, help, help them to come to a knowledge of God through faith in him, but then to lift them up and encourage them to minister to people in their time of need. He fed the hungry, he healed the sick, and on and on we could go with that kind of thing. But then we talked about yesterday, he came to preach. And the Bible says that the Lord Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, verse 43, he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. He said, I was sent to preach the gospel. And he said, I'm preaching it here. And you've been with me talking to his apostles and the others that were within his hearing. He said, you've been with me and you've seen how we've gone from city to city and place to place and region to region of the countries. And we've, we've, and every place I've gone, I've preached the gospel. He said, I got to go preach in the other cities too. And so Jesus was a preaching machine, wasn't he? And when he wasn't preaching to the crowds and the multitudes, he was preaching to the individuals and, uh, and sharing the gospel on a one-on-one -on -one basis, like with Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews that he won to Christ. And on and on we could go with that. So Jesus came to he came to reach the lost. He came to minister to the saved and to others. He came to preach the gospel. And now, today, I want you to think with me about this. In light of why Jesus came, I want, I want you to think about this now. Don't, don't, don't turn me off. Don't turn me off. He came to anoint preachers. God wants to use men of God to preach the word of God. And we need preachers today. We need preachers who will preach the word, not preach their ideas, not preach their, you know, following their favorite little ideology and, and uh, trying to find some new theology and all that kind of thing. We got, we, that, we got a world of that going on. Everybody wanting to start their own denomination, that, all that kind of stuff. Listen, my friend, get in a good Bible-believing, soul-winning, fundamental church. I happen to be I happen to be uh, IFBO. What you say? What's that? That's Independent Fundamental Baptist only, or KJVO, King James Version only. That's that's my that's not just my preference. It's a conviction that I have. I believe it's the right place to be, and that kind of thing. But am I going to throw rocks at somebody that's a little bit different than me? No. If they are loving Jesus, if they if they believe the simple plan of salvation and have gotten saved, and they're trying to reach their communities, I'm going to cheer them on. Listen, we we, it's, we we need to quit trying to uh, say that we're the only light in town. Last week, we talked about turn up, turn up the light. You know, we need to turn the light up. The, the world needs to see, and, and we're, Jesus is the light of the world. Let's turn up the light. Let's let people know about Jesus. And But that's another whole session. And so we come down today to this to this session, and I'm, I want you to understand this, we need preachers today who will preach the Word of God. We don't need to hear the latest philosophy. We don't need to find, you know, we, we chase all these things, all the political, we, we, we are pre preaching so much politics. And, and we're preaching uh, so much philosophy and we're, we're preaching so much history you know? and all those things are good. And there are a lot of great illustrations in, in those various areas that we can use in preaching. But my friend, our main text and our main goal ought to be to preach the word of God. We need preachers. Listen to what the Bible says. I'm going to just give you three or four verses and then we're done because uh, it's just not a hobby horse. I'm not going to just write it, but, but I'm going to read just three or four verses. 
service and we'll be done for the day. But we need preachers. Get, make sure you're in a church where there's somebody that's really, truly going to preach the word of God to you. That's one of the things I love about our church at, at Shawnee Baptist Church. I, I love our preacher because he preaches the word of God. It's not, here's what uh, the Bible says, but here's what I think he really meant. No, he said, this is what he said. This is what he meant. And this is what we need to apply in our lives. And and this is a, a verse you need to get memorized, get it in your head and and, and in your heart and then live it out in your life and, and be a testimony in a dark and perverse world. But anyway, let me get back here. I'm, I'm chasing this rabbit all, all over the place. But he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. The preaching of the cross is the power of God. You say, I'd like to have the power of God on my life. Then get busy sharing the good news of the cross of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. And you'll have that power, the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. You know, to the agnostic, that's the person that doesn't know what they believe, or to the atheist, or, or, or just to the folks that are sold out to being sinners, that kind of thing, uh, to, to them, to hear preaching, to, it strikes them as foolish. That's, that's foolish. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. I just don't want to, I don't believe all that junk. I've got my own ideas. But the truth is, if they sit under that preaching very long, if they're preaching the word of God, thus saith the Lord, it's going to begin to work on them. Now, in some cases, they might get mad at the preacher. I ha I've had people, I've had people literally write me letters and say that you are always, all you do is you're every week, you're, you're just trying to make us feel bad uh, about what, about our lives. And I'm thinking, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make you get your life in such an order that you can feel good about your life, not feel bad about your life. And you say, well, then what's it called? If it's not called berating and, 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 talking down to people. If it's not that, what is it? I'll tell you what it is. It's conviction of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit convicting you. And when you hear that, you get that little dagger in your heart and, 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 and you, and you want to strike back at the man of God who's preaching to you instead of saying, God, if you're speaking to me, I'm open. Teach me what it is you want me to know and how you want me to respond and make me available and help me, Lord, if there are things in my life that need to be gone, help me to get them out of my life. If there are things that are not in my life that know that ought to be there, help me to get them into my life. And when God speaks to you, even if it's one phrase, out of one verse. Man, you ought to underline that thing. You ought to write it down on a note card, stick it in your pocket, go over that thing. Ask God to help you to be that growing Christian that only he can help you to be. You know, the preacher can tell you the truth, but he can't change your life. He can be an influence. He can be a channel of blessing, but the blessing has to come from God. Will you allow that to happen in your life? Will you be, oh, instead of, instead of Having this attitude toward God, toward his word, no, no, no. Instead, why not say, come on, give it to me. Let me have it. Give me a willing heart. Oh, God, work with me, work through me. We need preachers today who preach the blessed word of God. Will you allow God to, 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 maybe somebody I'm talking to right now, maybe there's a young man out there, God is calling you to preach. Are you willing to give your life to him? Not for salvation. Hopefully you already have that settled. If not, get it settled. But how about you're giving your life to him to be used as a minister of the gospel, preaching the word. Let God use you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and blessing. Thank you for how you do use your people when they're available and when they're willing and when they're open to you. Oh God, help us as people when I sit under the preaching of the word of God, help me to have an open heart, listening to hear something that you might speak to my heart in such a way that I can get some a fresh insight and a fresh zeal and excitement about serving you. And Father, we'll give you the praise. We love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.